Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a front end dev environment using Webpack 5. Now, there's a lot of tools out there that are similar. You have Parcel, Snowpack, Vite. I do have a video on Parcel and I'll, I'll be creating one on Vite soon. Now, Webpack does have a bit more configuration than some of the, the, the other newer tools, but it's basically the OG of module bundlers and it's still very popular. You're bound to run into it somewhere along the way. And I also think it just gives you a great introduction into bundling in general and just creating an environment. So it's used with front end frameworks like React. You have tools like Create React App, which allows you to basically spin up a boilerplate application in minutes or seconds. But under the hood, it is using Webpack. And one of my goals for this video is to kind of get you to see how things work under the hood and show you how to create a powerful environment where you can use JavaScript modules. You can transpile your code with Babel, compile SAS if you want create source maps. You could use TypeScript if you want to do that. It, really, you can make your environment as simple or as advanced as you want. And I think a lot of people get confused and overwhelmed when it comes to uh, a lot of different build tools because there's just so much. There's so many out there. So Webpack, it, it's really not that hard to understand. In fact, this image shows you a lot. So you have your source code. It could be multiple JavaScript files, NPM modules, um, different assets, SVGs, PNGs, CSS, SAS, just all kinds of files in your source code. And then Webpack will build your uh, application into static assets for deployment. And there's all types of, of loaders and plugins that you can use. So um, obviously I'm not going to show you everything that's possible, but uh, I'll give you a good idea of what to put in your Webpack config and what plugins to use, what loaders to use and so on. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into VS Code. And I have a folder here called Webpack Starter. And, and another thing I want to mention is a lot of this stuff you only have to do once. You're building an environment that you can use for, for multiple projects. So I call this Webpack Starter because I'm going to obviously put it on GitHub and anybody that wants to use it can clone it and they can use that environment. So let's start off by creating a new folder. We'll call this source SRC. And then we want another folder in the root called dist. So basically source is where all of our source code goes there. Anything that we write, all the code we write is going to go in here ultimately. And then dist is going to be where all of our static assets are built to. So if you guys have have experience with, say, React and you write, you know, NPM build and it builds out your static assets into a folder called build. That's basically the same thing that we're doing here, although we're not using React. We could if we wanted to, but I'm not going to in, in this video. So in the source folder, let's create an index.js file. And for now, I'm just going to console log one, two, three. And then in the dist folder here, I'm going to create an index.html. Now, later on, we're going to actually install an HTML plugin so that we don't have to actually edit the HTML file in the dist folder. It will have a template in our source folder that we can edit. But just for now, we're going to go ahead and just add a boilerplate. We'll say uh, Webpack app for the title and we'll have an H1 here. We'll just say Webpack app. And then for right now, I'm just going to add a script and point to up one level into source and then index.js. OK, so to open this right now, I'm just going to use the live server extension for VS Code. So we can go ahead and uh, open with live server. But later on, I'm actually going to show you how we can install the Webpack dev server plugin. So we won't actually need live server later. But right now, if I go ahead and open my console, it's going to log one, two, three, because we're looking at source index.js. So we haven't installed anything yet, but I just want to show you if we install, not install, if we create another file here, another JavaScript file, I'm going to call it generate joke.js. And the reason I'm calling it that is because the app that we're going to end up with is going to be a simple dad joke application that reaches out to an API, gets a joke, and we will have a button if we want to fetch another joke. So it's going to be very simple, but I don't want you to focus on the actual project, the app. I want you to focus on the environment that we're building it in. All right. So in this, let's just do function, say generate joke. 
and let's see for now we're just going to return a string and I, I have a where is it I have a crappy joke here somewhere that I'm going to just grab this is from the API so I don't trust stairs they're always up to something so that's not very funny but that's not the point so let's export from here default and generate jokes so something like you would do with react or view you know you import and export files and and you guys know this isn't going to work just yet but let's go to index.js and let's say import gen oh, want to import generate joke and then for now let's console log the generate joke function not joan oops generate joke all right So if we come over here and we look in the console, it's going to say cannot use import statement outside a module. Now, there is a way we can do this by adding a type module to our package.json and all that, but Webpack is going to take care of this for us. So, let's go ahead and open up a terminal. I'm going to use my integrated terminal here, and we're going to first of all run npm init Uh, you can add dash y if you, yeah you will just do dash y just to skip the questions and then we want to install webpack so it's going to be npm install and we want to install oops npm install as a dev dependency so dash uppercase d and then webpack and webpack dash cli all right so if we take a look at uh, whoops if we look at our package.json you should see under dev dependencies webpack and webpack cli now to run webpack we need to create a script so let's go right here and let's get rid of test and let's call this build because we want to be able to say npm run build and then as far as what we want this to do get rid of that we want it to just run webpack now we don't have a configuration file yet so we do have to set the mode so i'm going to say mode and i'm actually going to set it to production at the moment so i'm going to save that and then let's come down back into the terminal here and we're going to run npm run build all right so you can see compiled successfully and then if we look in the dist folder we have a main.js that's just what it's called by default so if we look at this basically what it did is it looked at our source code here and it saw that in our generate joke function we're returning this and then we're console logging it here and it just basically put that into code that the browser can read so if i come over here now well that's not going to work and the reason for that is because in our index html i'm still referencing the source index i don't want to do that i want this to be just dot slash main.js and then if i come over here now you can see that it's going to console log all right so let's close that up we can close all this up except uh we'll leave index.js open so we can now import and export our own javascript modules but we can also use npm modules so i'm just going to give you an example you guys don't have to do this uh we don't need this module for what what i'm doing but i'm just going to install UUID which will just generate uh, a UUID number for me and I'm going to import that here and then let's see I'm just going to console log the UUID v4 function all right so if I just reload this isn't going to work because I have to rebuild it right we have to run npm run build okay so that'll build it and then I'll reload and now you can see that it's logging a UUID. So you can install any npm modules you want and use them now. And if we look at the main.js, it's a lot more complicated because we have that UUID code that is uh that's being compiled. All right, but I don't need that that module, so I'm actually going to npm remove UUID. All right. Cool. So, let's see. Now we want to let me just put this back and rebuild it. All right. So now we want to create a webpack config. So in the root, let's create a file called webpack.config.js and this is going to be in common JS syntax. So let's say module exports and it's going to be an object, a config object. And one thing we need is a mode which I'm going to set now to development. 
And since I set that now in package.json, I can remove this, the mode production and just run webpack because now it's going to look at our config. All right. Now, as far as uh, let's see, what should we as far as what I want to put in here now, I'm just going to set the entry and the output. So by default, it's looking at my index.js and it's outputting to dist and it's outputting a main JS. But you can change all that around if you want to rename stuff. So let's add here uh, entry. So entry and I'm going to bring in the path module. So const path and set that to require path just so I can use the full path. And then for entry, what we could do is say path dot resolve and then double underscore dir name. So it's just going to take me to the current directory. And then I want the entry to be in source slash and then index dot JS. Okay, so that's where I want the entry to be. And then let's say for the output, this can be set to an object with a path. And my output, I want to be the dist. So again, I'm going to use path uh, path resolve and then dir name and then dist. Okay, and then we can specify the file name that we want. So As you can see, the, the default is main JS, but let's go ahead and set that to set it to whatever you want. I like to use bundle dot JS. And then, yeah, I'm just going to save that and then I'm going to delete the main JS here. And if I come down and I run NPM run build again, it should create a bundle file. All right. And of course, I have to update in the index HTML. I have to update that to bundle. And it should just do the same thing. I didn't change any of the functionality. Now you can also um, you can set multiple entry points by making this an object. So I actually am going to make this an object and I'm going to set say bundle and set it to that path. And you could have multiple for if you wanted to add, do some code splitting. Now, since I called this bundle, what I can do is just change that to brackets and then name. So now this will be named whatever I call this. If I call this main and it would be main JS just to show you that I'll NPM run build and it still should be just bundle JS. Now, since we're in development mode, you have all this other crap in here, too. So if it's in production, it's going to be much less code. All right. So now I want to talk a little bit about loaders. So loaders will make it so so you can do just that you can load Um, images right into your JavaScript or CSS or SAS. And that's what I want to do is actually be able to have SAS files here and and have Webpack compile my SAS or have the loader do it. So let's go ahead and install a couple things. I'm going to come down here. We're going to do NPM install as dev. We want to install SAS. Now you can use node SAS as well, but I believe it's deprecated now. So this is uh, I believe it's Dart SAS. And then the three loaders that we want are style dash loader, CSS dash loader and SAS dash loader. So we want to install those as dependencies. All right. And then before we add our loaders, let's just create a SAS file. So what I would usually do is in my source, create a folder called styles. And then inside that, I'm going to create a main dot SCSS file. So this is a SAS file. And instead of typing out all this, I'm just going to paste it in. And if you want to copy this, um, you can get it from the repo. But basically just brought in a Roboto font. I have some SAS variables, primary, secondary color, I'm setting the primary color here, secondary color, it's container. Um, that's pretty much it. Jo a joke class and then a button class and doing a little nesting. All right. So obviously you can do whatever is capable, whatever you're capable of doing in SAS. And then I'm going to save that. And what I want to do is bring that right into my index.js. So those of you that have worked with front end frameworks, you've probably seen this before. So let's say import and then dot slash styles slash main dot SCSS. Okay, now that's not going to work yet. If I do an NPM run build, I'm actually going to get an error. It says no loaders are configured to process this file. Okay, we installed the loaders, but we haven't set them up. So we need to go into our Webpack config 
and the way we deal with loaders is we add a module object. So say module and then we have a rules array inside that with an object for each loader. Or I should say each file type. So we add in the test value and this is going to be a regular expression. So we put our slashes and then we're going to do a backslash dot SCSS money sign. So what we're saying here is any files that end with this extension SCSS, we're going to apply these loaders. Okay, we're going to use and then in an array, we're going to say style dash loader and CSS dash loader. and uh, SAS dash loader. Okay, so we'll save that. And now this should work. So let's do NPM run build. And then come over here and now you can see that those styles are now working. Okay, so I could go in my main CSS and I can play around with the styles. I could create more CSS CSS files and import them or use them, whatever. Um, so now what I want to do is show you the HTML plugin. So plugins are uh, a little more more powerful than loaders and can be used for a lot of different things. I don't want to have to edit this index HTML. I want to be able to just delete my dist folder and that's it and be able to just NPM run build and have it rebuild. Okay, so what we'll do is install. Let's come down here and let's say NPM install as a oops and why do I keep doing that install as a dev dependency HTML dash webpack dash plugin. Okay, and then once we do that, we need to come to our config and we need to bring it in. So cons uppercase HTML webpack plugin. Uh, we want to bring that in, say require. and HTML webpack plugin. Okay, so we bring it in and then we have to go down whenever we add a plugin, we're going to go under the module here and say plugins, which is going to be an array. And in here we want to say new HTML webpack plugin and that's going to take in an object with some options. First being a title, we'll say webpack app and then the file name which we're going to it's going to be index.html. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then we should be able to delete you know, I'm just going to copy this html just in case this doesn't work, but we should be able to delete the whole dist folder now and then run npm run build. and then it creates the disk folder and we have our bundle and then we also have our index html and you can see it's including our bundle js now the problem with this is if i add something here like if i add hello or whatever and then i do npm run build it goes away okay so it's going to get rid of whatever you put here so what we need to do is is use a template so we say template and Uh, you can, this is going to be in the source folder and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it template.html. So now in let's see, let's go into source and create a new file here called template.html. And then we're going to create a boilerplate. Now what's cool is we can actually get values like this title value. I can get that. I can put that in my template. So let's see, we'll get rid of that. And the syntax is going to be angle bracket and then I think it's what is it? percent equals and then we can say html webpack plugin.options.title and then we end it with a percent angle bracket. And then the body I'm going to have a container and let's put an h3 here we'll say don't uh don't laugh challenge and then we're going to have a div with the id of joke and the class of joke and then a button with the 
ID of joke, BTN, and what else? The class of BTN. And we'll say get another joke. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to save that. And we're going to npm run build. See what we get. Okay. Now, no, yeah, notice that the title says Webpack app, so I could change that to whatever I want. Um, and it's going to, if we look at the dist index HTML, it includes my template, and it also includes the bundle.js. And then another thing we can do is for caching, let's see, caching Webpack. Uh, let's see, we're using Webpack to bundle, blah, blah, blah. What I want to show you is, is this right here. So we can make it so instead of just being bundled JS, it's going to be bundled dot and then a hash. So a bunch of letters and numbers. And you might have seen this if you've used React and there's other frame, front end frameworks that do this as well. When they generate the assets, they have uh, some kind of hash. And basically what happens is this will change every time the file changes, um, which helps with caching. So. Let's actually do that. It's pretty simple. All we have to do is uh, where we have our name, which is right here. We're going to add brackets after that. And then we just want to do content, content hash like that. And then we'll save that. And then what I'll do is um, delete this bundle JS. Actually, we can just delete. the whole dist just delete the whole dist folder and then we'll run npm run build again and then if we take a look in dist we should have the bundle with a bunch of numbers and letters and if we look in index html it automatically puts the the correct bundle in there all right if we come back over here it should still work so really cool all right now i think we should do the server Um, because we can we can set up the Webpack dev server and we can make it auto reload as well, which is nice. So let's do that. Let's um, go to our package.json and we can just go to the scripts here and let's call this dev and we'll set it to Webpack and then serve. And then if we come down here, we run npm run dev, not build, but dev. It's going to ask us if we want to install the Webpack dev server. So I'm going to say yes, because we need that. And then it's going to run it. I believe the default port is 8080, but we can change that. I'll show you in a second. Yeah, so it's going to start on 8080. And it might not work right away because we do need some config. So let's try it. Whoa, I don't know what that is. It's... Okay, so it does work, but I'm going to just stop it with command C and then we're going to go into our webpack config because we do want to add some value, some um, options for our dev server. So let's put it right under output. We'll say dev server, which is going to be an object. Make sure you add a comma there. And we used to because we need to tell it where what to serve. Obviously, we want our dist folder and it is doing that, but we're going to specify it anyway. And you used to do this with content base like that, but that's that's not what we use anymore. Now we do static, set it to an object and then we do uh, directory. So directory and we'll go ahead and do path dot resolve. And uh, double underscore der name and then we want dist. Okay, so that's what we're serving. And then I, li I like to use the port 3000 for front end stuff. So I'm going to set port to uh, 3000. And then open, I'm going to set to true, meaning when we run npm run dev, it'll open the browser automatically. And then hot, I want to use hot reloading. So we'll set that to true. And compress, which will enable gzip compression. We'll set that to true. And then I, I usually do this history. Uh, history API fallback set that to true as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and run npm run dev and it should open automatically. Let me just close this other stuff. Okay, now we can stop live server. 
So I'm going to just stop that port. And now it's going to run on localhost 3000. All right. And if you get this message, this is from live server. I'm not sure why it's still showing, but you can see it's still outputting the joke here. Uh, ultimately, we want to put it in here, but that's really not what I'm focusing on right now. The functionality. I'm just trying to show you the different things you can add to your your environment. All right. Now, a couple other things I want to mention uh, in the dist folder, these files can kind of add up. So if I make a change, let's say to index. So if I save that and then I were to run NPM run build again, you'll see that now I have two of these files here, these bundle files uh, to prevent that from happening and just in, in keeping it clean, we can just go to Webpack config right under file name. We can say clean and set that to true. So that'll keep it clean and it will I believe it'll only keep one file. So let's try it. Let's delete the whole dist. And by the way, when you run the server, it's not running it directly from the files in dist. It's actually running it from memory. So I don't have a dist folder right now. And if I run the server with npm run dev, it should st it still works. All right. So uh, it's not running it directly from the dist files, but let's go ahead and build. All right. So and if I ch make a change and then run build again, I should still only have the one bundle file. Yep, it's, you can see it just changed because of that clean option. Now, another nice option is to add uh, source maps. So basically source maps are good for debugging because a lot of times you'll get a message with a line number that doesn't show you where the actual problem is in your source code. So source maps provide a map for or from your your dist or production code to your source code and to enable source maps is really easy. We just go to our config. We'll go right above dev server and you just want to say dev tool and we can set that to a string of source source dash map. There's other options as well. You can kind of customize it, but this is like this is the one that I've used. All right. Now, since we did that, if we do an NPM run build, we should also get right here, as you can see, a JS dot map source file. Which you can use in the browser and in, uh, you know, in sources and it will just help you debug. So it's good to have. Now, I do want to add some other loaders. So if you're if you want your your code to be, you know, backwards compatible with older browsers and so on, then I would suggest using Babel or using the Babel loader. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll clear this up and let's NPM install dash D and we want Babel dash loader and we want at Babel slash core. And then also the, the ENV preset. So it's at Babel slash and then preset uh, preset dash ENV. OK, and if we look at our package dot Jason, those should have been added. And then we just need to go to our our Webpack config and we're going to add um, a rule for that. So under module, we have our rules. We have our SAS here. We're going to go right under that. And now let's do test. And that's going to be a regular expression. So we want to do backslash dot JS money sign. Uh, whoops. That should be a comma. So basically what we're saying here is anything that has a, a dot JS extension. Now we don't want to mess with anything in node modules so we can actually add an exclude here we can say exclude and and here we want to say node underscore modules all right and then let's say use and this can be an object and the loader that we want is the babel loader so babel dash loader Okay. In addition to that, we want to set options 
and we're going to set that to an array. Uh, I'm sorry, an object and then presets, which is an array. And that's where we pass in the at Babel slash preset uh, dash ENV. And you don't always need this, but I don't know, maybe if you want if you want to be backwards compatible with with older browsers for certain um, certain things you do in your JavaScript. So let's save that. And just to make sure that works, we'll do an NPM run build. Okay, good. Now you might also want to load images. So let's say we have a, a logo or something. I actually have this uh, this laughing dot SVG that I want to load in my in my JavaScript file. So in source, I'm going to create a folder called assets. And then I'll go ahead and just bring that into assets. All right. And I want to be able to to bring that in. So from my my index JS, I want to be able to do import laughing from and then go dot slash assets slash laughing dot SVG. Okay, if I try to NPM run build should get an error. Yeah, so it's basically going to tell me that I don't have a loader for this. Where is it? I don't know. I can't find the error. But uh, what we can do is in Webpack config, there's nothing we, we even have to install. Uh, Webpack comes with this asset resource loader. So we just have to add. Let's go after the, the Babel loader and open up some curly braces. And we just want to do test. And let's do backslash dot. And then inside parentheses, we can put the extensions that we want, which are PNG or SVG or JPEG or JPEG or what else? GIF GIF and then money sign. And then we just want to do I. So it's case insensitive. And then the type is going to be asset slash resource. And I believe that's I believe that's all we have to do. Um, oh, up here under output. So under output, let's say asset module file name and set that to brackets name and then brackets ext extension. Otherwise, because I want it to stay I want it to stay called laughing dot SVG. If I don't put this, then it's going to get renamed to, to something weird. So, yeah, let's try that out. So we'll do NPM run build. And we shouldn't get an error. And if we look in our dist, now you can see we have laughing dot SVG. So now we're bringing in laughing here. Let's do const and we want to call this laugh IMG because I want to bring that an image tag in. Actually, I don't think we put it in the template. So yeah, in the template HTML, let's put an image, but we're not going to put a source. We'll give this an ID of laugh IMG. So that way we can get it with document dot let's say get element by D. And that's going to be laugh IMG. And then what we'll do is take laugh IMG and say dot source and let's set it to laughing, which is the SVG that we brought in. And then let's run the server. OK, so there it is now for the joke functionality, because I think that's pretty much all I want to do as far as like the environment goes. Um, Yeah, let's add the let's do the joke functionality. So I'm just going to stop the server for a second because I want to install Axios. I mean, we could use fetch or whatever, but uh, I just want to show you some kind of NPM module that we can use within this little app. 
So now let's run the server and we'll go to uh, generate joke. It's kind of annoying when this opens up when it's already open, but let's go to generate joke and uh, we'll go ahead and import Axios. Say import Axios from Axios and then for this API, it's uh, I can I can has dad joke dot com. You do need to send headers with uh, application slash Jason for the accept header. So what I'm going to do is create a, a config and set that to an object with headers. And then here we want to set accept and set that to application slash Jason. Okay, then we'll go outside of config and say axios dot get. And uh, yeah, the API is HTTPS. And then it's I can has H A Z. Dad joke dot com. And then we just want to pass in the config here. All right. And then we'll just do a dot then. Let's close that up. So dot then we'll pass in here res. All right, and then we'll do a document. Say document dot get element by D and we'll grab joke. And we'll do dot inner HTML and we'll set that to res dot data and then there's a joke object on that. Okay, so there we go. Why does Norway have barcodes on their battleships? So when they get back to port, they can Scandinavian. Oh man, these are horrible. <laughs> All right, so now we just want this button to work. So let's go to um, let's go to our index and let's say const joke btn and set that to document dot get element by ID and I think it has an ID of joke BTN and then we'll just add an event listener on to that. So joke button add event listener. We want to listen for a click and then we'll just call generate joke and uh, we don't want to console log this, but we do want to call it once. Okay. All right, and I think that's it. So now let's click this and each time I click it, it's going to fetch a new joke. So the the functionality of the app is really, really simple. You know, it only took us a couple minutes, but you you now have this um, environment that you could use for anything that you want to build and you can now use NP, NPM modules, your, your own JavaScript modules. You can import SAS files and SVGs. Um, it's going to use Babel. What else? We have a, 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 ser a server with live reload, so source map. So there's a lot of things that uh, that we used here. Actually, one other plugin that I wanted to show you is the bundle analyzer plugin, which actually shows you like a screen of all of of what your application is built from, what takes up the most space and all that. So uh, that'll be the last thing I do. So let's clear that up and we'll npm install dash uppercase D and it's called webpack dash bundle dash analyzer. All right. And then what we have to do is go to our config and we're going to bring bring that in. So let's go down here. Let's say const bundle analyzer plugin and set that say require and then uh, webpack bundle analyzer or web yeah webpack bundle analyzer but then it's going to be dot bundle analyzer plugin uh, wait a minute require yeah that should be there all right, and then we just have to add it down as a plugin. So after this one here, we'll say new bundle analyzer plugin and we don't have to pass any anything into it. So now let's save it. And I believe when we build. 
So let's do npm run build. Yeah, so it's going to open up this this local host 888. Let me just stretch this out. And it gives us like a visual representation of uh, our our application. So you can see like Axios and then you have the dependencies of Axios. We have our main dot a SAS file over here, our index.js and you can see stat size 309 bytes, parse size 15 kilobytes, gzipped path, etc. So pretty cool. You can like zoom in on it. And you can do like stat parsed, see the gzipped. Um you can search modules. So I I don't know, I thought this was a cool extension. Um but yeah, so I think that's it guys. So I'm going to have the the link in the repository for this if you want to clone it if you didn't follow along and you you know you want to use it, that's fine, but hopefully you enjoyed this. And again, I will be making a video on Vite. I'll probably make one on Snowpack as well. Um and, and you know, they're not as as config heavy as Webpack is, but I think if if you can learn Webpack, I think you can learn any of the the uh, the newer ones. But that's it guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.